Hey, hi, hello. <laughs> Hope you guys are doing well. I got something I want to talk about really quick. I um, I almost didn't know <laughs> what day it was. Oh my goodness. I took a nap around five-ish, I guess. And when I woke up, it said 748. And I looked outside and it was light outside and I'm all confused. I'm like, is it tomorrow? What would tomorrow actually be? So... Anyway, um, a part of me creating a life that I love, <clears throat> one I don't need a vacation from, is inclusive of naps. Now, if you've been in my life for ever and a day, since even my early 20s, I've always taken naps. Always, always, always. And now I do it, I didn't even understand what was transpiring with the naps, but now it's a place of freedom for me and um it's just part of the the life that I'm creating it helps me to rejuvenate and just all the things and I feel so blessed you know on a Friday to be able to rest especially seeing as though it's holiday season because I remember those times in my previous career where this was like just go hard time, right? Any holiday or, or anything of that nature. And so anyway, uh, that was just a little station break, but I hope you guys are well. You see in the title, it says, are you taking your struggle residue into your thriving season? Are you taking your struggle residue into your thriving season? So one of the things uh, I know from when you're you find yourself in a season of struggle everything feels hard in that season any of you ever been there before um thinking back i i can remember the behaviors and habits and mindsets that i had because it leaves you in like this survival mode right and so whether you're penny pitching or whatever it is that you're doing trying to you know, just meet the basics in life, the basic necessities, um, you begin to develop habits and behaviors and mindsets in those seasons. For some of us, those seasons started when we were young and it's just something we carried over naturally into our adult life where there was lack or scarcity or everything was hard, um, you know, just trying to meet the basic things. I have um, Inside My Destiny by Design course, one of the things I teach my clients is about goal setting. And, you know, not just basics as it relates to goal setting, but I talk about our the basic needs that everyone has. So if you're just born on this earth, you just this is a realm of needs that we all uh, find ourselves in. And that first realm is survival mode. This is where you just, you're trying to make sure the mortgage is paid or the rent, um, the car payment, or either having transportation, food, lights, you know, the basic necessities in life. You know, you're just trying to make sure that you can do those things. And, you know, one of the reasons I teach them the different levels is so that they have something different to aspire for, because I recognize that most people, maybe 80% or more of people regardless of what their income becomes, they take some of those behaviors into new realms of earning money or, um, yeah, getting more money uh, in their life or their life changing. That mindset and behavior, I call it the residue of struggle, has a tendency to stay with you. And so I want to talk about that. I want to share some differences in what uh, struggle, the struggle mindset and thriving, or some people say striving and thriving, but um, that struggle mindset, the behaviors, mindsets, and thoughts, and choices that we make when we're in that struggle mode, as opposed to how we live and have our being when we're in thriving mode. And I shared before that these aren't like behaviors or mindsets that are privy to specific uh, income ranges. Because I know people who, you know, earn a lot of money who 
still have these same mindsets and life is hard for them. It's exhausting from them, for them. They are running, you know, Katie bar the door and as opposed to thriving in life when you're like really flourishing and growing and enjoying it, they're still in survival mode, even if, you know, they earn great revenue. So we're going to talk about those differences um, on tonight. Of course, I have my list, right? So one of the things, you know, when you're in survival mode, um, everything seems hard. Whether we think of it, whether we, you know, are recognizing that things feel hard, that's just kind of how it feels when you're in survival mode. Um, even the simplest task, um, cooking dinner or, you know, not everybody likes to cook, so that might not be fair because I, I really, really enjoy cooking. I find pleasure in it. And the more that I embrace my feminine energy, the more I enjoy just some of the mundane things in life because I actually allow myself to be in the moment. But when you're in survival mode or struggle mode, you never really feel like you can kind of like just breathe and really pay attention to what it is that you're doing, uh, enjoy what you're doing because your mind is always on all these other fires, you know, that you have to put out. And so I think it's important that we become aware because I see a lot of people who, you know, they're at the cusp of thriving, but the mindset and the behavior and the choices that are making still look like struggle, still look like, you know, survival mode. So one of the things about survival mode, remember I said this is not contingent upon how much you make because there are many people who are six-figure earners and more who still feel like this. And a lot of it is residue from, you know, struggle or survival mode. And there's a... It's an unconscious behavior that people are operating in and thriving requires you to step into a new level of being. So here's one of the things. Remember I said it don't have nothing to do with your income, right? Because it's a behavior and a mindset. So there's exhaustion in struggle life. Um, there is, uh, people are just happy to have made it through the day, right? So if you find that you're feeling this way, but you say, okay, but I'm earning more money, but I still feel overly exhausted. I'm just frustrated. I feel overwhelmed. If you find yourself having more of those days than you do days where you're feeling fulfilled, you know, you probably have struggle residue. You know, you're still like in struggle mode mentally, meaning the way that you've created your life, the way that you've created your business, the, the way that you do your daily routine is still from the mindset of someone who is struggling. And remember, every season that we desire to step into requires us to change, first and foremost, our mind. That's the first thing that has to change. Or we will recreate the same emotions and feelings, irregardless of whether we get new income or new increase or new home, new car. That mindset, that behavior, those choices will be the same. Um, the next thing is... Um, that struggle survival mode is kind of like, you know, you're, you're living just to live. You're, um, living just to exist. You're not feeling fulfilled or really enjoying life. Um, it's struggle residue, right? It's rolling over into a season that's supposed to be a season of thriving. Um, so when you're in more of a thriving realm, it feels like growth and and flourish flourishing that's like your whole being and existence is to grow and to flourish and what that struggle residue does is it keeps you like on this uh like on a treadmill where you're moving but you're really not going anywhere other than you know the same route that you're always going uh, next, most oftentimes in that struggle residue has you uh, reacting to things as opposed to responding. And one of the reasons that you're reacting to things is because there is no real like downtime to, and if there is, you're exhausted, so you, you don't want to do anything, you Netflix and chill, whatever the case may be. But instead of using downtime, if you even have any, 
to uh, plan ahead or look at life future forward, you're just happy to have gotten the day over with, right? It's, it's that struggle residue that you may have brought with you in your journey towards thriving. Uh, next, you feel inauthentic and stuck. Listen, I remember. I was like, man, I, I just, something does not feel right. It just doesn't feel right. Like I'm doing all of this stuff, but this can't be what the rest of my life is going to look like. I remember, you know, feeling that way when I had a, a season of struggle. It was just like, no, I can, I refuse to get used to this feeling. I refuse to get used to, you know, am I going to be able to pay the bill or um, can I get organic food? You know, do I got to shop cheaper or buy the cheapest thing on the menu? I just wouldn't go. Like, I'm like, if I can't fully, you know, experience it, love it and enjoy it, I won't go. And what I would do was I would, instead of having, because this happens a lot, we'll, you know, we need like instant gratification in those seasons. And so it's very difficult to have delayed gratification. Um, but if you find that you're feeling that way, for me, this was just for me, I would personally hold out, right? Until I could do the thing that I desired to do instead of getting a lot of little spurts of stuff that I didn't enjoy. Like I am particular about the hotel that I stay in. I'd rather go somewhere, stay less days, you know, if money is, is the issue. I'd rather go somewhere, stay less days and have a more luxurious time than to extend the amount of time I'm there and not experience things the way that I desire to spend experience it. I hope that makes sense to you all. Just my thing, right? I just, because feeling means a lot to how I live my life and the quality of, of life that I have. So um, also trying to get the cheapest. Listen, I get it. When you're in struggle mode, when you're in survival mode, um, everything needs to be lowest price. You go straight to the clearance rack. Um, and, and this is not to say that we shouldn't be good stewards over our money. This is not what I'm saying at all. But what I am saying is oftentimes, even once you've gotten ahead, you take that, that residue, that energy, that struggle energy into your thriving season. And then your thriving season, <clears throat> when you just look at it as a whole, looks like the struggle season. You just got more stuff. You just got more stuff, right? Um, and so in a thriving season, you go for value. That's what you're looking for in a thriving season. You're not necessarily, of course, you're going to be a good steward. Of course, you're going to want to find good deals. Like, for instance, if, um, so I'm doing a one-day live intensive uh, called Teach What You Know, where I'm helping people to uh, turn their intellectual property, gifts, talents, and expertise into money, ways that they can monetize it. And so I did something I've never done before because one of the things I'm doing in this season is I'm collapsing time, right, in different areas. And I, I teach my students about that inside the Exceptional Mastermind. But one of the things I did was I did like this two-hour opportunity. I normally do some days and things of that nature. And so it had a, a payment arrangement and then it had a one-time fee that was like $9.97. People chose the $9.97 instantly. Now, it doesn't mean that those people that chose the $997 offer couldn't afford what the regular price is. Um, but they found value in it, right? They still, it's still a high, uh, um, higher priced service. Well, I guess that's relative, but... They did it and they got the offer at a lower rate. Does that make sense? What I'm sharing with you all? So, but they paid the thousand dollars like just like that. Um, and they did look for an opportunity to save because they knew it would go up by like four or five hundred dollars if they didn't do it then. So, I'm not saying not to do things like that, but so often our lives become busy and consumed 
with things that really don't hold value. So we'll buy a whole lot of little stuff here or there just for the instant gratification as opposed to investing our energy, time, money on things that are really, really valuable. And I'm going to talk about that um, more in, in just a moment. That that struggle residue is hustling. Listen, I it's there are many people, the majority of people actually, who run six figure businesses or have six figure incomes, are hustling their way through it. So in survival mode, you know you got to do everything, cut your own grass. I mean, any little thing that you could do on your own to save a buck, that's what you're doing in that struggle season. But when you move into a thriving season, if you don't change that mindset and that behavior, you still end up having uh, the same quality of life, if not worse, because the things that you're doing, the way that you're earning the money is, is so much more exhausting, right? And then you're still trying to do everything. And so it's very easy to take that... Um, that residue from when you did have to struggle into your thriving season. I want you guys to be aware of it and say, you know, have I been taking this struggle residue into my thriving season? Is this why, although I'm earning more, I may not be enjoying, you know, my life or the quality of my life any more than I was before. I'm really, you know, Katie bar the door. Like I'm busier than I ever was, which, you know, for those of you who are entrepreneurs, it's easy to forget most people open a business. Of course, it's something they may love, they enjoy, they want to serve the world with. But the underlying portion of opening the business is for more freedom and more money. And if they take that struggle residue into the new season, the new opportunities, the new doors, they'll still try to do every single thing on their own and they won't enjoy it, right? And the, the mindset of earning more money comes to do more work, right? As opposed to finding ways that where your money works for you more or where you're not trading your time for dollars more. This is one of the main reasons I created the Teach What You Know course. Uh, I think it was maybe back in 2017. Um, and this is a program that I'll be teaching in a one-day intensive because I want people to have an opportunity to monetize their gifts where they do have a better quality of life because you know they're not having to chase the money as much. Um, they're attracting it or they have ways that you know it can come in while they're asleep. And most people can't grasp that mindset, you know, because more money means more work. Like they'll go open five more businesses. You know, I remember a young lady had four or five different locations, but she worked every location. She leave one location, drive to another one, go to an, I mean, just all these different locations. And I mean, it seems like it has the um, falsehood of abundance <clears throat> and it is abundance. It's abundance of busyness, but not in the true sense of what abundance is. Now, what that would look like if she was thriving would be if she had four locations that were, that had systems and, employees and staff that were running it, not her trying to run all over the place and do all of the things. It's also something that many entrepreneurs fall into with, you know, five different businesses before, you know, the businesses begin to operate and run for themselves. So that's that struggle residue. And we take it into seasons that are supposed to be thriving seasons. And so, um, where it relates to spending. So when you're in struggle mode, when you do get an opportunity to spend like retail therapy, it's spending to like soothe something, right? Um, as opposed to it being joyous. It's like, I'm, I need to be distracted from all this stuff I got going on. I'm just going retail. I'm, I need, right? Some retail therapy. I just need to feel the feeling of spending the money um, in a in a way where it's like instant gratification, and then after you know you spend it, you feel awful because now you're back in the you know struggle mode. Oh, let me go make up for this. Where as opposed to when you're thriving, it you're spending it from a place of joy. These things make me feel good. These things enhance my life. These things make me grow. These this is an investment. It's something that's going to give me a, a different quality of life. 
I hope this is making sense to you all because I've been there. Look, I cried, guys, when I, um, before I got married, I was married for 14 years. I've been divorced now for three, but before I got married um, and it was time to move into the home my um, ex-husband had purchased, I had a yard sale. Baby, I cried. I cried. I had so many pairs, you know, I might be telling my age a little bit here, but Versace was, you know, one of the popular uh, designer brands. And I had tons of it, tons of Versace jeans, jeans I paid, you know, $300 for on the yard sale. They, I'm selling them for $35, right? And then even, and I made a few thousand dollars at the yard sale. I remember it. And I still had tons of stuff. And I wasn't crying as much about the money I had spent um, as much as I felt like I wasted it. Like I bought things that really didn't serve like a real purpose in my life. Of course, it felt good in those seasons. You know, I was traveling, I was going out of town, I was partying, all those things. But it was, it, it did something to my soul in that moment. And this is why I say, um, you know, when you're taking that struggle, struggle residue into a thriving season, sometimes spending is, uh, you know, simply because it's the going thing. It, it, it's serving no real, real purpose, right? Unless you're in a position where it, you know, it doesn't matter. And I was doing, you know, well at the time that I was purchasing those things. My bills was paid. I had money in the bank. I was traveling, but my level of consciousness changed about how I wanted to do life. And there were some other things that I didn't do in those seasons that I felt, you know, I should have been doing. So, you know, it's easy to take that struggle residue into a new season. And then that new season starts feeling just like, you know, the last season when in actuality, it should be a thriving season. And, you know, what we end up doing when we do that is, we like sabotage the new season. I hope this is making sense. We sabotage the, the new season. If you think that making money is hard, it, that it is going to be hard because your consciousness is not even open to how you know earning money can be simple or, or easier. If you have in your mind, I saw someone share today, you know, that you got to work hard and, and I get it. I was on that train before. <clears throat> and um, that means that I was only attracted to things that would seem difficult, that would just, you know, take a lot out of me. You know, I got to sit up all night to do all of those things. I, I was attracted to that because I believed that that was the, the answer for making money, that it had to be hard. So oftentimes in that struggle mode, we create these behaviors and these mindsets about earning money that we take over into a season where we started earning more money. But the way that we earn it, it we'll go do 50 more things. We'll create 50 more avenues of earning money that all require us to be there doing it, right? That require us to be no sleep and all of those things because in our mind, I want y'all to hear me, we believe that earning money has to be hard. And a lot of times that's, you know, that struggle residue uh, rolling over into a thriving season. But a thriving season, you're aligned with ease. And so your consciousness is open to ways that, you know, you can earn more money with, with ease. I've had this tremendous um, just mindset shift even over the last let me say four or five months. I mean, I'm on an ascension, you know, I'm my, my, I'm open to, uh, it gets to be easy. And so because I've worked on my limiting beliefs and my thoughts as it relates to money, I'm like, oh, I could do that. I mean, it just comes differently when you've done inner work in that area and you've gotten rid of some of that struggle residue. And oftentimes, as it relates to money, it is a mindset, but then it has to become this behavior that you you step into and, and you um, embrace. Again, the struggle residue, you feel exhausted. Um, let's see. Um, you're often feeling uninspired. 
It's like, even though you're going to work or you're doing your thing, it's just like, okay, this is routine. This is life. Um, whereas you feel empowered in, in a thriving season. Um, overall, uh, fear is, is still a huge factor. It's like, even if it's gotten better, you still fear failure so much that, um, that survival mode is just the energy and you got to see how I'm sitting now. It's just stuck. It's like this rigid energy and, uh, thriving is, is more relaxed and open. If you notice my hands are closed here and everything is tight. Whereas it's like, I'm, I'm protective mode. I'm not really letting anything in. Whereas thriving, I'm more relaxed. I'm open. I'm able to receive Right. So oftentimes there's a receiving issue um, that's transpiring from struggle residue. And I talked about um, our self-esteem when it's been compromised. So our value can be related to incidents that we've gone through in life. But I talked about our self-esteem when it's being comp being compromised. Um, receiving is also hard for us. Hey, K. Bowie, how are you? Beautiful. Even to receive is being compromised. And all of this is on an unconscious level. And most people just aren't aware. It's on a very unconscious level that you're taking struggle residue into a season that should be a, a season of thriving. Whereas in a thriving season, you're more optimistic. You're more optimistic. Now, I'm not talking about like you're just foolishly doing things, but there's really this openness and optimism that you embody. But when you are in struggle mode or survival mode, or even if you're, remember, I, I keep going back to this because what fools many people is how much money they're earning, right? So they can be six-figure earners or high earners, but not realize that they've still taken struggle residue into a season that should be a, a thriving season. So they're like, oh, I, I earn a lot of money, but they're working hard, they're overwhelmed, they're exhausted, they're unfulfilled. And there's fear around, you know, everything that they do. Even their reasons for going so hard are based on fear and not from possibility and not from um, optimism. There's more of a rigidness. Again, I'll take this same stance because this is what that struggle energy feels like. There's a rigidness to everything they do. Whereas in a thriving mode, you're flexible, right? Uh, you're creative in that area. You're, again, you're open to new ways, new possibilities. Um, and when I say new possibilities, there's a different like belief that you step into when you're in thriving mode. Like you don't fear releasing money the way you feared it in, you know, struggle mode. Again, you can take that residue right into a season where you should actually be thriving. There's a, you still do a lot of low vibrational things in, um, a survival realm or, or a struggle realm, even if you're earning good money, it's just like you do low vibrational things, whereas you do more high vibrational things when, you know, you're in thriving mode. Uh, now this right here is, is going to seem counterintuitive, right? Because I believe in like Dave Ramsey's uh, process. I actually taught this class called Get Your Money, Get Your Life that talked about how I became debt free and how I hadn't had a car payment in many, many years. I would buy my cars um, straight out. And I remember one of the things that I did at that time was I used an envelope system. So I would, you know, um, put money in different envelopes based on different things that I wanted to do. And I can remember this. Even then, I had like a freedom envelope because I knew that travel and things like that were important to me. But when I taught the course, someone asked me had I taken Dave Ramsey's course. I've never taken this course. I hadn't even heard of him way back then when I did the envelope thing. This was like in the 90s. I hadn't heard of him. It just so happened I was teaching, you know, my students what the steps I had taken to become debt free. And, you know, as they shared that with me, I started watching him. And one of the things I realized that I feel is like this zone that people get in 
once they've gone through the system of like getting their money in order and things like that, they become really, really frugal. And it's almost like they don't enjoy their life. There's like this fear. It's like every, it's rigid. Here, you know, hearing is, is rigid again, but ascension and thriving and evolving, you actually go from this, you know, rigid state to being more flexible and really saying, I'm going to do the things that my soul and my heart desires, right? Instead of being in this, you know, I'm checking all the boxes. But uh, the point that I wanted to share with that is those people often say that they, they'll say things like money isn't everything and it's not, but we know we need it out here, right? It's cash or candles. Um, just for what we talked about in the beginning was basic survival mode. But those are the people who are actually more obsessed with money. They're looking at their bank account every two minutes. You know, they will drive 20 miles to save $5 off of something. Not even thinking, right? Not even thinking that they're spending that in gas. Instead of buying the thing that, you know, might be of higher quality, of higher value. And so it starts programming them to kind of be more obsessed with money than someone who's actually thriving because when you step into the space of thriving it's not that you're being irresponsible it, it's not that at all but there's a new level of trust that you adapt because you understand the laws of reaping and sowing you understand the laws of value and energy and all of those things that um impact the level of abundance that you step into because you can't take a struggle mindset into an abundant season the energies are completely off. It's going to be a different vibration that you carry. And so even if you attract some things in the abundance realm, they fall off easy, easily. It's sporadic because it's just a different energy. It's a completely different um, energy. So the struggle residue says, I got to find more ways to work. I got to find more ways to work. And the thriving energy says, I'm open to receiving more ways of earning money. Can you all see the difference? Okay, can you see the difference in that? Does that make sense? So the, the struggle residue, even if you step into a new income bracket, is, is saying, I got to go find more ways to make money. Got to go find more ways to make money. And the thriving realm says, I'm open to receive more ways of earning money. And it's and receiving money and it's completely different hey there i see you on my other page does that make sense it's completely different completely different energy um again um i'm doing the teach what you know live intensive f for this very reason well this is one of the reasons because one i believe it gets to be easy two i've created ways in my life from my talents my gifts my expertise that allow me to earn money with ease. I, I share with you all, when I opened this opportunity, I did like this two hour, not two day, but two hour like flash sale and people purchased it. They paid a thousand dollars, which was a discounted rate and they purchased it because these people were saying, listen, I have an expertise. I want to create another stream of revenue, um, something that I could offer online i could get the money while i sleep you know i don't know how long it would take you to earn you know a thousand dollars in what it is that you do but this is just an example and that wasn't the you know regular price of it and i just think many of you have gifts talents um intellectual property i've worked with nurses um professors um you know, helping them to turn their intellectual property into something they can monetize, right? Because remember when we, that struggle residue says, I got to find more ways to work, right? And that means that the, the extended amount of their time is working. And when they do have time off, they're resting because they're exhausted, not resting because it's a part of self-care, but they're too exhausted to do, you know, anything else to really live life in a full way and I, I believe that women are some of the hardest working people on the planet um, especially if you have children and even if you don't have children because when you don't have children it's like everybody thinks that it's your responsibility to do stuff because you don't have children and so I just believe that 
um, that dynamic, especially for women. And I say this because our body chemistry, our hormones, it's all made different. It wasn't meant to be in that masculine energy all the time. We actually have about a strong decade of working like that. I think that there's a season in our life where it's necessary, but at a certain point, something begins to change mentally, emotionally, and that masculine go hard work 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 mode, um, it does one thing, first of all, right? Scientifically, it ages you tremendously because we weren't designed to work that way. Doesn't mean we weren't designed to create income and revenue, right, in abundance, but the way that we're doing it, you know, we're not men. Our bodies just weren't made um, like men's were. And so I wanted to create a way for, you know, women to be able to do that and to monetize uh, their gifts and, and their talents. So that's a good place to mention my Teach What You Know Live Intensive, intensive is taking place in Raleigh, North Carolina on May the 14th. Um, and it's one day where I'm going to teach you to turn your gifts, talents, and expertise into a course with ease. Because many of you are thinking that you got to spend thousands of dollars on all these tools and gadgets and all those things. And you don't. Not to get your work professionally out there in the world. And um, I'll be teaching a very small group of women. I have seven spots left now. How to do that. They'll be able to use the curriculum to create the course that will allow them to do seminars, workshops, speaking engagements. Um, they can coach with that opportunity or they can turn it into a one and done and create a digital course that sells for them online that um, allows them to earn money while they sleep. And so I'll be doing that on May 14th. The link to that is RenewfulCircle.com slash T-Y-W-K live. Those are the initials for Teach What You Know. T-Y-W-K live. I love for you to join us if you have um, a message that you've been wanting to get out to the world if you've been wanting to create another stream of income um, come spend the day with me we're gonna have a great time while we're doing it as well and all the details are on that page and if you feel led this is another thing right um, because when you're in thriving mode when you feel led you follow the, the leading, you follow the leading because it's more of a trust season um, than anything else. So if you feel led and you go to the link, um, you do yourself a disservice to say, oh, I'm just gonna sit and, and wait. And that's like the one of the things about, you know, that struggle residue because of that fear that still exists from when you were struggling or um, if you are and you're trying to transition out of it. A lot of it is mindset, behavior, um, and the choices that we make. And so, uh, teach what you know, live intensive. Come visit me, Raleigh, North Carolina. There's a major airport for there, there for those of you who are flying in, and you'll get the details to the location after you have secured your um, space in the room with us. It's really intimate too. It's not like a big conference room. I wanted to be able to really. Um, have community and connection with the ladies that are there. So join us. We're going to take a break and eat some food uh, in between us working. And you'll need to bring your laptops because we're going to, you know, walk through that process on that day. Anyway, so uh, the, the struggle residue uses things as distractions as opposed to doing their real work. So they may go on this big shopping spree or, or they'll use retail therapy to ref to deflect from from necessary things that need to be done um some people use relationships this is still that struggle residue residue like well let me just go find another relationship instead of working on the things that are really going to take my life to a new level the relationship becomes the place where you go to try to find the peace um the relationship becomes the thing that helps you to avoid the things that are actually going to take you to the next level. I hope that makes sense. So oftentimes, it's that's still struggle, right? It's, it's still struggle because then you get the relationship and all the other areas of your life topple over 
that thing. So oftentimes that struggle residue often tries to find things to that are distractions from the real work that needs to be done. Um, that's my take on this evening, guys. It's so easy to take that struggle residue into a thriving season and not even realize it. It's like you still have that survival mode going on when you've actually, for some of you, you've tripled your income, but survival mode is still on your mind, right? And you cannot exist in a season of abundance if you have a struggle mentality. It will sabotage it every single time. Doesn't mean you won't have spurts of abundance to come in, but there won't be a flow um, to it. That's my take. I left some resources at the top. I would love for you guys to join me. Meet me in Raleigh, North Carolina, May the 14th. Um, go to the, the page and, and sign up while you feel led, right? Where nothing comes to like change your mind or cause you to step into fear, but um, to be in a space of expansion and possibility. There are a few more resources at the top, the Destiny by Design course. For those of you who you've been using other stuff to distract you from doing your inner work, the Queen Behavior Master Life Session, uh, the replay for that is up until um, 7 a.m., in the morning and then the replay will go away and it won't be available again until I um, do a new enrollment. So that's my take. I hope you guys have been blessed. Even if you come back on the replay, say hello. If you're watching me on YouTube, hit the subscribe button, say something in the comments. Let me know how this resonates with you. Um, you guys have a super, this is a holy week coming up too. I just did, I thought, just thought about that. And so I'm in expectation of some really, really major things to, to happen. I've been connected spiritually on a different level. And that's another thing. The struggle residue finds it really hard to connect to spirituality. Doesn't mean they don't do religious stuff because a lot of times that's what's going on. But the, the spirituality in itself, the relationship, the ascension, the inner work and all of those things become really difficult with a struggle mindset because oftentimes when we're tapping into our spirituality on a different level, we are moving into a new season of trust. We are moving into a space that exists as more of a rest, more of a play, more of a um, belief that we're creating our life uh, from the inside out. So that's my take. Are you taking a struggle? residue into your thriving season.